So, so a bit of Fluent UI. Uh, um, this is some project that we already created two years ago, which was the goal to, uh, back in the old days, we had the Office UI fabric, which was just HTML and CSS. And so this was some at some point deprecated. So we wanted to go back to this. And this was really the first draft of H2 was really a weekend project. So it was two days coding. And then I had the most of the Fluent UI components uh, done in HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. We need this in some cases. Another thing or another motivation for H2 was accessibility first. So I wanted to learn more about accessibility and I built H2 directly with all the accessibility in there. So we are, are currently testing for the Web Content Accessibility Guideline 2.2, which is is, rec is the recommended uh, state for um, since last year. And AA means the quality standard that we have there. So we're in the middle. There's just one higher, which is the AAA. Uh, but uh, the AAA is, is, is the minimum that you should aim for when you want to make accessibility applications. So we also support the EU standard in there, which has an own um, standard, and then the US standards uh, 500, oh, uh, section 508, which is defined by the US government. There is also uh, a link here, also uh, if you want to know more about accessibility, I, I linked here, uh, uh, put here a link uh, that gives you more information on that. Uh, so H2 is, is basically sh for SharePoint teams and any web application. So we are completely independent because we just use HTML at the core level, right? So the way we built H2O, so and we have two flavors there of the water, uh, as you will. So we have the first H2O core is just really the HTML, uh, CSS and JavaScript implementation, which then will be taken one-on-one into React components. So if you not want to write HTML and CSS only, or, or use the components in an HTML, uh, CSS only way, then you can still use the React components. But whenever we build something, we first build an H2 core in HTML, CSS only, and yeah. And also what you'll have in there in H2, we also support the H2 icons, which are the Fluent UI icons, and there are 3,000 that you find also in H2 with a dedicated sample. If you want to know more, if you want to find the NPM packages, so then the simplest way to do it, go to NPM JS and, and search for uh, for H2. Like I said, we currently have the version two, and we wanted to get HTML and CSS right from the right from the start uh, correctly, so that we don't have breaking changes. And since version one and version two, there are really no HTML and CSS breaking changes and no React breaking changes in there. Uh, so there is no complicated upgrade policy. You simply use uh, your older application that was built with version 1.0. You just simply can use it. The only thing that we did, we rewrite, rewrote the, the complete library internal, the CSS that is built out completely in SAS start, which is also supported uh, nowadays uh, in SAS. 116 and onwards and we also have in there if you upgraded your your solution not yet to 116.1 then you still can use all the css in there so there's no breaking changes in this regards as well let me show you a little bit go out of this documentation so we have our completely new revamped website like i said you have the h2 icons in here which are the fluent ui icons so you can search for example uh, for a truck and then select this one and then you can download it. So there are two styles in here, regular and filled, and can download those files, this, this SVGs as one file and then use it in your applications. What else do we have? So we have here the documentation in here, atoms, molecules, organisms, template and pages. So if you go search for bigger components then you go to pages and then they gradually go down. So what I see here is, is for example, for the Microsoft Teams client, is a splash screen with three splash screens across. And you also have the description in here. Uh, when I go in here, then I see this is one component that is built out. What is this component built out? So I can say, OK, what is the food built out? And I can then see here, OK, we have a primary and the standard button in there and how it is built out. So you can really dig into and and we directly code in the system so we don't need to spend any time extra effort and documentation uh, on documentation so we build it right in there this is how we build out all the components so 
there are some components. So what you also see in here, for example, this button is now the standard SharePoint teal and you have an, a switcher in here. So you see, for example, this is how it looks on the regular standard Teams client. This is looks how it looks in high contrast mode. And this is how the button then looks on, on the dark theme in, in Microsoft Teams. Another thing that we have in here, or invested a little bit that maybe you're not aware of, there are so many things that currently work in, in, in HTML already. So what we have in here is a validation uh, for, for the input fields. So over here, I specified a pattern which says A to C, small uh, lowercase letters, and I want to have four to eight letters in there with a pattern directly in there. That's native HTML. And then I when I type in one, two, three, four, it gives me the red border in here and says uh, this is incorrect. So you this this field is invalid. Of course, you can also request this with JavaScript. But then when I write in here A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I have six characters now in there, and now it's a valid field. So a lot of things in there where we invested. So we have all the input fields like email, password, phone, uh, input with prefix. Uh, with URL uh, prefixed with uh, fields like that, and yeah, um, if you have time, then look look around and what what you find in there. So the question is now, how do I get this into my SharePoint framework project, right? And let me switch over to the code. The first thing that you need to do is we have the on init. This is uh, documented, so you get the theme provider back from from Microsoft, so you have all the semantic slots in there, the uh, the, if, the effects in, in there, and, and then you create out of that CSS variables. So there's one simple, so what we basically do is we add, where is it? We add custom properties to the DOM element of the web part. And then we have all the colors that are coming from the theme, uh, from, from SharePoint, into a CSS native way and have all the uh, all the color slots in there, which then will be used for uh, from from H2 directly. Um, we had some problems with the semantic slots because sometimes the uh, semantic slots doesn't match exactly what the name of the, the semantic slot is. So we choose in in version one already that we switch over to to palettes. The other thing what you have in 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 the effects is you have in there, the roundness of the buttons, as you see here on the right side, uh, this, this is also something uh, that that comes that is directly defined by SharePoint out of the box. So the major breaking change, what 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 I told you before, this SAS start. So we, you see, when you create a new web part project, you have the add import in here, and you it imports the style sheet from somewhere from the node modules folder from the add Microsoft folder. This is currently in SAS marked as deprecated and shouldn't use this anymore. Instead, what you should do is the first thing is the use statement can be compared to the import statement in, in JavaScript or in C sharp. So it imports a library, uh, which is the meta utilities from SAS, as you will. And then we have here the web part, which is the surrounding class, which is prefixed or or Post fixed uh, with, with a random string, so that we don't have uh, that we don't bleed somewhere else outside of SharePoint. But since we have all H uh, CSS classes in there, which doesn't support it, this this uh, scoping that Microsoft does in the SPFX web part, we do a small trick here. So whatever we import here will be automatically prefixed with the H2 showcase class. And what we also have in here the global style, so it means. The pseudo class means don't touch my CSS that we have in there. OK, so now we have all imported all the stars in there and it you see this button as it looks right now. Um, what one thing that you can do here is or what I did here is simply I went over to H2O, go to the buttons. Button and then search for what is it primary Go to buttons directly. It works um buttons and then i here's the primary button then you can switch over here to html and you can take this one out and directly copy it into your, your render method in the html so this is how this button was created and as you see it automatically all the css will be applied automatically so 
this is not really a smart way to do it. I show you another way what I did also in here. So I have the components in here. Another way is I create a new component, which is a static component. It says, has a function in here, primary, I pass in a label, or when there is no label defined, then return me back the, the, uh, the button label, as you will. And what I can do now directly in the HTML is I can go in here, paste this into the template literal, call the function, pass in, this is a primary button with a break afterwards, save the file. And if the demo gods are with me, then you should see immediately the right side refreshing as far as it, when it has built. So this is a primary button. This is one thing that I can use. Another thing that you can do with use in the button, and this is a little bit more complex written. So it this public static standard button creates a standard button. It has a, you can pass in the label as with the button above. You can pass in the callback function, which then will be called automatically. So what I do in here, then it returns the HTML button. So I create the button in here with document.create. Then I add the H2O button class to it which is the class of the standard button, set in HTML what I want to have in there with the span as a template literal, and then register. If there is a callback, register automatically the uh, button and then return it. Of course, in my code here, I need to do a little bit different. I need to now say this dot doc, uh, DOM element, first element, child, prepend h2 button standard with event, and then I pass in this click function, which does nothing else than just sends out an alert. Save the file, and we should then see in a couple of seconds the button appear on the right side when the build is done. Hey, Stefan, can you zoom your code in a little bit? Sure. Better? So now, yep. I, have the, now I have the button. I can also zoom in here. Let's click the button and it says hello world. That's how you can do it. But you can also do more complex stuff. And this is probably what. So the PMP reusable components has already an accordion. In H2O itself, I also create, we also created in this version an accordion, which completely doesn't use any JavaScript. So these are just standard elements in HTML. So this is how it works in H2. Uh, we have the HTML over here. So this is built out of molecule accordion item. We have here a details, which is a standard HTML tag. And then we have a summary in there, which is the header. And this gives you this fancy accordion out of the box with no extra JavaScript involved. The only thing that we did in here in the accordion summary, we set an icon there and have some CSS that rotates this automatically once it is open. So we can do this, also bring this over to our uh, uh, SPFX solution pretty easily. So what I did here is, again, I created an accordion item. So where what I do in here is just, it returns a template literal, it's just these details with the classes. Then I have the summary, I have the icon directly embedded as an SVG, I have my header again that I pass in, and I can pass in an HTML content in here, or otherwise it returns the lorem ipsum. What I can do now in the web part code itself, I can create a function which says, uh, get accordion and then I do the same thing what I did already with the button. So I have the H2 accordion item. Say I want to create a new item with this title and this was with, with this context in there. The same thing I want to create a new accordion item, new accordion item, and so on and so forth. No JavaScript involved. Just recognize that I miss here a section. Load it down. And what I can do now with this function with the get accordion, I simply add it to my code in here directly in the HTML. And then it, after the compilation, you see under direct when it's compiled, hopefully. Not yet done. 
was this sec oh yeah this was the section was too much maybe mm. works <laughs> so you have here an accordion a nice one which has the text that are pushed in here h so was built on HTML and CSS first documentation. I have here the lorem ipsum, which are the default ones when, uh, when I don't compile anything in. And again, what you saw in, in H2 with H2 core is also available as H2 React components. So if you want to know more about it, there is also a link in here, a QR code. So npm install at nad slash hshow core or when you want to use the uh, hshow react component npm install at nad hshow react uh, and follow us on twitter are there some questions uh there was a question about browser support uh, which i think is a good one to answer uh yeah, yeah. browser support uh the first chromium edge browser no internet explorer and <laughs> Most likely, uh, I mean, for the accordion stuff, this is pretty, it's already five, six, seven years old browser will still be supported by the, by the summary and details. So all modern browsers then, yeah. essentially, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Modern browsers, uh, a couple of generations back. So I think uh, CSS variables is now out for five years, six years or something like that. So if you have older browsers, then I would upgrade those perfect perfect and and of course you can use h2o outside of sharepoint framework right it's not yeah, dependent exactly. on SharePoint framework. it's it's absolutely not dependent on sharepoint framework the only thing that you need to do is uh, we already have so we have standard objects which gives you the root class or what i use in in, in h2o in the html documentation there is no spfx involved whatever i just have a simple file which contains all the theming slots that are defined in the in the fluent UI fabric palette. And and you pass this into your website, set the CSS variables, and then it automatically pass through all the components. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, I, I think it's great. Uh, personal opinion. Um, I've used this for a sample app that we that we have in the uh, Microsoft Graph developer proxy uh, repo as well. Um, yeah. So we just use that as the uh, uh, as the UI framework for for just a you know a basic HTML JavaScript uh, website and it, it yeah it's it's great it's nice and lightweight as well uh, it yeah the, does the job uh, it looks nice as well it looks looks beautiful yeah. uh, sp speaking of lightweight the gzipped version of the complete CSS that we have in there is 15k and the unzipped version has a 60 uh, 68k or something like that which is everything in there. Tiny, minuscule. Yeah. You won't even notice it. It's it's that small. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Well, thanks very much, Stefan. Thanks for telling us about H two O. I know it's version two. It's been it's been out for a little while. Gone through some iterations, but you know, I think uh, what you've shown today just uh, shows uh, what, a, what a great uh, UI framework uh, that that you and the team have, have been able to to put together. Um, yeah, I, I love it, and I'm sure other people love it as as well. Yeah, and also, um, good, also kudos to Julie Turner who does the React implementation of H two O core. Kudos to Julie. So it's a great team. Uh, so well done. Well done to everyone.